When is the best time to film a Q&A? If you answered right after you had a mental breakdown in your car, crying all your makeup off, you would be correct. My hair used to be up in this clip. It has since come down. And I'm wearing an outfit that apparently makes me look like a few different things. The first, some type of southern cowgirl. The second, Dorothy, a modern Dorothy. I don't have a third. It does have a matching skirt. I've actually been sitting in my car for like an hour, just crying in this dark parking garage. Could I move my car outside? Do you guys have some light? Yes. Am I going to? No. This is where I feel like talking to you. So this is where we're gonna stay. I asked you guys on my Instagram when I was in a much better mental state for questions and I think we should go through them together. I'm okay. <laughs> I've never been someone who handles emotions very well. I have very intense emotions. The amount of times I've talked to my therapist explaining that I'm either like super happy or super sad or super happy or super angry. Like there's no middle. There's no balance. There's no... We're good. Well, that's a lie. It's just not very often. I don't even know what I'm saying. I just really feel like I needed to sit and talk to you guys and have a little moment with my besties. I didn't even really get my smudged makeup off. Does it look good? What do we do when we're sad? Like we talk to our best friends, you know what I mean? And I don't want to get into my brain and my emotions and my feelings because I feel like when I watch my vlogs back, it is literally me just like dumping information onto you guys about the same shit. I don't think you want to hear the same thing all the time. And I feel like you're dying to hear. I'm thriving. I have my shit together. Here's how to be a perfect adult. I don't have the answers to that. Every time I think I'm close to having my shit figured out and being normal, Fucking air quotes. Normal. What does that even mean? Everything just falls apart again. So <laughs> let's just get into it. Okay, guys, you know what time it is. It's sponsor time. And today's video is sponsored by one of my favorite sponsors that ever exists, Factor. Why? I'm a lazy biatch, but I still like to eat good food. And Factor is the solution to that problem. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals super easy. They deliver fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals straight to your doorstep. That's what we like to hear around here. They have a team of gourmet chefs that cook every single one of these meals. Doesn't that make you feel special? Picture Gordon Ramsay making your sun-dried tomato chicken. And they only use ingredients with integrity. And they do that, that way you can feel your best all day long. That sounds special. Nothing but the best for the best, if you know what I mean. No matter what your lifestyle is, Factor has the meals to help you live it to the fullest. They have keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus meals on the menu each week. They're prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians. And each meal has all of the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long. Also, did I mention they taste good? Let's try a bite, shall we? I am running late. Another reason why Factor is so good. Here's a little bite. Why am I surprised? It's good every time. If you guys want to try Factor, you can head to factor75.com or click the link in my description box and use code SamanthaJoe50 for 50% 50 off your first Factor box. Once again, you can go to factor75.com or click the link in my description box and use code SamanthaJoe50 for 50% 50 off your first box. What's your excuse? That's why you don't have one. Do it. Thanks Factor. I love you. I'm gonna finish my lunch and get going. Hi, my name is Fanta Joe. You definitely are gonna watch this video and wanna subscribe, but if you do, hi. <laughs> Join the family of mentally different people. I feel like some of you guys watching have to like be good. Air quotes are back. But for the most part, we just don't judge each other here. We let each other be hot messes. We support each other. That's pretty much the only requirements if you wanna be a part of this family. Let's get into the questions. Have you enjoyed taking a break from YouTube? At first I didn't know what to think when I saw this question because I was like, mm, I don't remember taking a break. But I do feel like the way this year has moved, for a moment there, I was more focused on short form stuff than I was long form. But strictly that's just because short form content is something that's new for me and I've been making long videos for such a long time. And so short form kind of got a spark under my booty cheeks for making content again. And it was just fun and exciting and new. You guys have been loving it so much on TikTok. It is just completely different in every way than these long form videos. But I've still tried really hard to make vlogs. Guilty as charged, I've sucked at it. But if you really look at it, I've kind of sucked at it for a long time. And maybe I'm just calling myself out. But it's been months now. I've made sure to be giving you guys content, but sometimes I just forget. If I film it for TikTok, I forget to film it for YouTube. And it gets kind of messy. There are some influencers who live on this planet that just remember to film everything. And I just sometimes live in the moment. <gasps> 
crazy. Sometimes I just find myself living more in the moment and that's okay, but I want to get better about it. Or at least just like separating the two and thinking like, okay, today I'm filming for TikTok, tomorrow I'm filming for YouTube or just getting better about like filming vlogs throughout like the week because I can just like vlog random shit, you know? Because you guys will just literally listen to me talk all day and I don't understand why, but I love you for it. Um, so I don't think I've taken a break, but I've definitely taken on TikTok, whereas YouTube used to be my only thing. You guys got all of the content that I had to get but I've just been trying to like work harder and do more stuff. It has brought me so many opportunities, you guys. I went to the Barbie premiere. Do we just want to talk about that for a second? The Barbie premiere. I could do a whole story time about it. And I do have clips from that. So maybe I should. Would you guys want to listen to that? I'm not really a story timer. But maybe I could rope Andrew in and we could make a story time together because he is so entertaining. Being in the same room as Billie Eilish, Nicki Minaj, Dua Lipa. Like, how did I get there? Most of the opportunities that I've gotten have come from TikTok because all of your attention spans are gone. I'm not judging though because mine is also gone but everyone's attention span's gone so a lot of like the sponsors and everything are over on TikTok getting invited to events and stuff is from TikTok and I had a really positive experience with the Barbie premiere like I hung out with people that I just could not believe were like real people like Hannah Godwin speaking to her was something else Susie the current bachelorette was sitting right next to me at the Barbie premiere guess who was sitting in front of me Mackenzie Ziegler the dance mom's icon rounding it back out because I have so many tangents but I have ADHD what do you expect from me. I don't feel like I've taken a break from YouTube. I just feel like I'm kind of spread out more now versus I was only on YouTube. That's not to say that you guys don't deserve more and deserve better and I love you and I am going to be getting better at it. I really am going to try. I'm trying to put some things in place, making my team of people bigger so I have more time to just focus like on the content side instead of like sponsorships and editing and whatnot. Like right now Andrew helps me with editing. I am bringing on a new editor. I believe she's going to be editing this. So say hi everyone. And I'm hiring an assistant for like during the week to help me with things. I'm scared to film alone so I need someone to like help me come to the gym and film my gym videos. I need someone to help me shoot like Instagram content for sponsors. I feel like an assistant would just help me have more of like a schedule and still get my stuff done. That way at 5 p.m. I can kind of just stop working and be a normal human being because my schedule is all over the place and I feel like the lack of consistency is what's causing an issue up here right now because at the beginning of the year I was all about forcing myself to do things that make me uncomfortable. I did that and it put me in this position which is amazing. My career has grown so so much but now I'm like okay what now I'm kind of at that what's next moment I was all in for like three months posting every single day and then eventually I don't know how these daily vloggers have done that for like years it just gets to you a little bit I didn't feel like I was taking time to really focus on me and be like a human I've been kind of doing the opposite of that and just posting as much as I can while still like living so I'm working on finding that happy medium when am I ever gonna be like mentally stable I don't freaking know like I feel like every time I'm like oh yeah I'm good now I'm not Hopefully adding people to the team will help that. And in return, maybe I will have more time to put out more YouTube videos. How have you been recently? Anything new going on? Any changes? Overall, I think I'm good. I've had so many exciting things happening. I already talked to you guys about that. Nothing's really changed other than me moving here. I have a lot of exciting things coming up. I hate you if I can say that. Like, just tell us or don't. I just think really what I need to focus on in my life right now is like what I kind of said earlier, finding a happy medium with work and life. I want to work hard and I want to progress and I want to grow in my career, but I also want to have a routine and enjoy life. <laughs> you know what I mean? I already explained this to you guys in like the last vlog or vlog before how I feel like I'm just trying to like keep up with all the sponsors and stuff and we've toned that down so I have time right now I just have to catch up to where I can be I don't even know what I'm fucking saying. I just need to get caught up and then I can have a life. Like I can have time to go to the sunset on the beach because I have not gone to the beach once by myself yet. I want to wake up early, have a clean house, go on a walk, start my work day. That's the kind of stuff that I'm looking forward to. I'm just trying to get there right now. So I would say I've been stressed, but that's just because we're in a new season of life. A lot's going on. We're trying to learn how to handle it and adjust but overall I'm great. I feel very lucky and very blessed and I love being in Florida. I'm just in like a transitional period, it feels like. When I started doing things that made me uncomfortable, it has brought so much good into my life, but it also causes a lot of change and change can take time to adjust to. So I'm trying to give myself a little bit of grace, but I also want to get my shit together. I envy the girl in January and February and March and honestly April that worked every single day like this. Granted, 
she that might have been a little unhealthy there was so much motivation there i don't know where it went Ooh, what's something you've learned about yourself this year i think i've learned that i'm capable of more than my brain tells myself i am i have really bad imposter syndrome so i'm really trying to learn to tell myself that i deserve what i have and that it is cool i don't have to downplay the things that i've accomplished and i'm trying to teach myself that because for some reason in my brain i'm not allowed to like accept compliments i don't grasp how cool it is that I have you guys and like what I do and, and I disassociate really bad. Sometimes in my brain there's Samantha Joe and then there's me and I don't really know who this person is because I just disassociate so far away from reality sometimes. I don't know why my brain can't comprehend me accomplishing anything. Like if somebody else was doing exactly what I was doing, I would be parading them, hyping them up, being the best hype woman ever. But when it comes to doing that for myself, I don't know how to do that. Even when you guys like get excited to meet me and stuff, my brain can't comprehend that. I'm like, ah, like wrong person. Cause like I'm not Samantha Joe in my brain sometimes, which is a mental issue. Cause it is me, <laughs> I am me. But sometimes I just feel like I don't deserve the good things. I've learned that about myself and I'm trying to change it. I feel like those thought processes processes are what has caused me to kind of lose parts of myself over the past few years when people didn't like certain parts of myself or I didn't think people didn't like certain parts about myself or my personality I would kind of just like put them in the back door or the second someone told me I was weird or they didn't like how I make weird noises or how I dress I would just immediately change that I've kind of learned that from doing that for so long I'd lost a lot of myself and I've really tried hard to recognize those things this year and get myself back we're getting there it's an emotional roller coaster for sure but I definitely think we're on the right track sometimes I just remind myself that it is a lot easier to live in the discomfort sometimes because eventually the discomfort becomes comfort which might not make sense but it would be easier for me to just continue on the way I have for years it would be easier for me to do the bare minimum and to not try and fix the things about myself that cause me to stay unhappy like it's easier for me to just lay in bed all day you know what I mean and then feel bad about myself for it and binge like that's out that's easier than and me getting up every day and forcing myself into these routines, fighting the voices in my head that tell me that I am not good enough. I really struggle with seeing other influencers and thinking that I'm not doing enough or I'm not good enough because I don't think to pick up my camera 24 seven, even though it's healthy to not pick up my camera 24 seven. None of that probably made any sense. I've just learned that change is hard and it takes a lot more effort, but it's worth it. What is my goal of the summer? It's having more than one an option. I would love to get to a point where I I am waking up in the morning and have like a good morning routine because I've been kind of waking up late which is really not like me I'm usually up at like 7 or 7 30 every morning like if the Sun's up it wakes me up I would love to get back to that because that would signal to me that whatever's going on up here is going well I would love to start cooking at home more again I have started to cook more this past week because I have my HelloFresh and my factor but I want to get back into that I don't know if that's necessarily like a summer goal but just an in general goal also I want to find a way to budget that I actually enjoy and that I can stick to. I tried the cash wallet thing. It doesn't work because nobody freaking takes cash and I just don't like having cash, I've realized. I've done some things to try and be better with my money. Like I have, I opened a new bank account and a new savings account. I just don't touch the money that I put in. <clears throat> Oops. I just don't touch the money that I put in there, but I want to find like a way to like budget and stick to it Maybe I'll film like a what I spend in the week video So you guys can like harass me into being smarter with my money. That's a goal always a goal doesn't matter what time of year What's like a summer goal? I just think by the end of this summer I would really like to just be happy and have things figured out even if it's not completely figured out I would just like to be consistent and to feel better like consistently if that makes sense because right now I have like two days a week where I'm like yes I can do everything. Nobody can stop me. But the other days I'm like fighting to get out of bed and eating Buffalo Wild Wings at 11 p.m. So, which I think's wrong with eating Buffalo Wild Wings at 11 p.m. by the way. But when you're ordering it every day and that's your fourth meal of the day, the binging's been pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. How did you manage long distance? I didn't. We tried and we failed. Long distance doesn't work with my attachment style, which I've been really trying to heal, okay? I am somebody who has an anxious attachment style. I don't know where she came from. I don't know how that formed, but I get very codependent and anxiously attached. Honestly, as much as my birthday last year in September sucked, like going through a breakup and stuff, I don't know that I would be who I am right now if that didn't happen to me. I think it really woke me up and made me realize that I have to be happy on my own. I have to be happy as my own person. I cannot 
not rely on somebody else to fill that happiness for me. One, that's not healthy. Two, that's not fair to myself. And three, not fair to the other person because who wants to be the sole source of somebody's happiness? Nobody, that is so much pressure. There are so many reasons as to why that wasn't okay. I had completely done that. I lost every single part of myself. A lot of parts of myself that were the reason my boyfriend wanted to be with me in the first place. I'm not sitting here saying this is all my fault, but I think everything does happen for a reason and it's so hard to see that and to understand it in the moment. But I would not go back and change that for anything because I got myself back in that process. I learned that no matter what happens in my life, I have me, it's okay to like the things I like. It's okay to enjoy the things I enjoy. It's okay to be weird. It's okay to dress how I want to dress, even if everyone else thinks it looks stupid. I got parts of myself back that I didn't really realize I lost or I didn't even remember existed. We didn't survive the long distance, I guess you can say. I don't say that to say that your long distance relationship couldn't work. Long distance relationships take so much communication, so much understanding, so much time, and so much money. Going back and forth is so expensive. Obviously, I'm happy. They Things have worked out the way that they have. I don't know that I would recommend a long distance relationship, but I know that so many people have had long distance relationships and they have been extremely successful. Maybe the distance wasn't the problem and I just needed to go through time alone in order to find my own value again and that's just how that looked. That's just how it played out, you know? So I feel like I'm just not a good person to ask because there are some things that are so beautiful about long distance relationships. I think about having to say goodbye all the time and how hard it was and how sad it would make me and how I would just sit around and wait for the next time that I got to see him. I know that if I had to choose, I would never choose to do that again, but we did. It it was like two years of that. Now I have my apartment and he has his and we can see each other whenever we want, but we can also go home to our own places and still have that like freedom of not living with somebody yet. I don't know how to give you a good answer for that because <laughs> we live close to each other now and I wouldn't do that again unless I had to, but I wouldn't want to. What's my favorite song right now? I have a couple. I can't like play a lot of them because I'm pretty sure I get copyrighted copywritten. I downloaded brain apps on my phone to help me like exercise my brain because I'm turning 25 in September and I need to get her more developed before she finishes developing. My brain has gotten scarily bad. Here are some songs that I like. This is You're Gonna Go Far by Noah Kahan. The only time I got to pray for a red light destination as a deadline There's no strong hand and sound like Don't have that. No sound like the reason I like this song is because it reminds me of like leaving home like I had to leave Wisconsin for myself because I knew that as much as I love my mom and my family that that wasn't my place I wasn't happy there I couldn't really fully bloom and be who I needed to be there and grow into who I am today in Wisconsin I sound like a motivational speaker it just reminds me like it's okay to leave and choose yourself it doesn't mean you don't love your family it just means you love yourself Oh my god, my underwear. This one's an obvious one, okay? We love it. I actually haven't heard anyone say anything bad about Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo. How's the castle built off people you pretend to care about? What a mesmerizing, paralyzing, fucked up little thrill. Blind sucker, fame fucker, bleeding me dry like a goddamn vampire. I get really into that one. Work song by Hozier. This one makes me sad. When my town comes around, baby, get no grave. Can hold my body down. I'll crawl home to her. That's how I feel about you guys. Like if I ever like croak or something, just know I'm really trying to dig my ass back up out of that grave just to be here for you guys. That's some deep shit. Can I show you a worship song? I'm gonna say this just once because I feel like I have to, mostly because I want you guys and me to be on the same page. So I get like nervous even talking about this and I know I shouldn't. I am a Christian, but not what you're thinking of, okay? I've really struggled with my relationship with Jesus and God because you see a lot of, or in my opinion, I don't know how to fucking say this. I see a lot of Christians who care more about telling other people what they're doing wrong and judging them for what they're doing wrong more 
than they're spreading love, if that makes sense. I think some of these people believe that by pointing out other people's sins, that means they're being a good Christian. That means they are helping bring people to Jesus. And I simply do not see it that way. I think me, a little human on this earth, has no freaking right to tell somebody else what to do, how to do it. I make mistakes every single day. I am no better than anybody else just because I don't do certain things. I think the reason I love Jesus is simply because of love. And I feel like religion has just changed, I think, what Jesus stood for and what he believes. I've always had issues with like churches. I love the community that church brings, but I just know that my thoughts are probably different than a lot of other people at churches are. You can't, oh my God, I just get heated. I'm gonna use the name Karen because everyone uses the name Karen. I'm sure there are some lovely Karens out there, okay? But you cannot tell me that when Karen dies and goes to heaven, right? Gets to sit right in front of Jesus, be like, hey, what's going on? How are you? How you, how have you been? <laughs> that he is going to say, Karen, amazing job judging people. Amazing job pushing people farther away from me. Amazing job making people feel like they couldn't be close to me or they weren't holy enough to be with me. Do you get what I'm saying? In my mind, if I acted that way, I would be placed in front of him and he would say, why didn't you love people the way I told you to? Because at the end of the day, even if you're using the excuse of, well, the Bible says it's wrong, so I should tell them it's wrong. Like, you're still judging. And I feel like people don't want to admit that, but I didn't make the rules. I don't have the power to tell somebody else that they're not good enough, that they should act this way. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I am not perfect. I'm in no place to tell somebody else that they're not good enough for Jesus because of the things that they're doing when I know that I do things that are nowhere near perfect. I just get, I get heated about it. I get really angry about it because I think Jesus in a whole, everything that he did and showed is literally just love. Be nice to everybody. Treat everybody with love. Help people. Like, that's, that's it. It has become about money. It has become about control rolling groups of people and fighting. And I just think it can be such a beautiful thing. And so when I say I'm a Christian and I love Jesus, I read the Bible. I do go to church, not every single Sunday, but there was a time where I kind of just like would listen to everything that I was being told and like your pastor isn't God. And I don't know, a lot of people have like issues with religion and I get it. I can see where there can be trauma involved there. I'm very lucky that I got to build my own relationship with Jesus and how I view him and what I think he stands for. And it just has taught me how to be more gracious towards people, more giving, and I find comfort in him, and that is my own personal relationship with him. It does not mean that I agree with Christians treating people in a certain way. I know that's not all Christians. I know there are Christians like me out there, okay? And I'm not saying I'm better than them. I'm just saying that's not how I choose to live and lead my life, but it breaks my heart when I've ever mentioned my faith because I get comments like, I'm gay, are you still gonna love me? Or I've had an abortion are you still gonna love me or am I still welcome here and that breaks my heart and I don't want you guys to think that this is ever an unsafe place I don't care what you are I don't care who you are what you identify as I don't care you are a human as am I I love you we all do things that by biblical standards would not be okay and that's it's the whole point of Jesus that's why he came <laughs> I'm gonna live my life being nice to everybody, treating everybody with kindness. I'm not gonna live my life looking for reasons to tell people that they're wrong. I'm not going to meet people and start pointing out the ways that they have to change their life. I'm going to meet people and show them the love, the kindness, the compassion, the generosity that Jesus showed people. And I believe that is my way of showing people the true love and forgiveness and everything that Jesus wants us to be. And that's just my personal opinion. I say all of that to say I listen to worship songs <laughs> and so one of them that I've really loved recently is called found a love by seven hills worship it is just so beautiful found a love that would chase after me and every heartache there it would be it fills every break and the space in between how he loves me isn't it party kind of like you fall into your heart that beats for me loves me so just something that is so beautiful. I hate that it has such a negative connotation to it because I really feel like in its heart and core and soul, I believe it is something so pure. Like the whole point is a love is so unconditional that there's nothing you could possibly do that could make you not good enough. And there is so much comfort in knowing that because there are so many things in my life that I have done. Uh, 
that have taken me so long to forgive myself for and that I still struggle with every single day and now you can literally hear the rock concert going on outside I have struggled so hard to like forgive myself and like wonder how I could ever be good enough or just like worthy of like you guys and the things and the blessings that I have and there's so much comfort in knowing that I am worthy of being forgiven and that is so loud maybe if I move my car I just get so scared to talk to you guys about it because I don't want you to hate me but at the same time what am I gonna do about it? Look at how much brighter. I've been hiding in the dark. That is so much better, Samantha. Good job. I don't wanna dwell on this too much more, but essentially, like if you listen to some of those lyrics, like it can truly be so comforting. That's what it should be, but for so many people, it's literally traumatic because of the things that they went through revolving the church and stuff. It just makes me sad because I know I'm very grateful to have found like Jesus on my own. I really am still talking about this. I was just talking about worship songs. Oh well, whatever. How do you work through fear? Fear of getting out of the house, trying new things, etc. That's actually a really good question because I didn't realize how far I had grown in that department until like a few months ago. I don't remember where I was, but it just hit me. I was like, oh shit, I used to like never leave my house. Like I would never do anything. And I still definitely have a lot of anxiety around public things. Being in public still freaks me out. I kind of just forced myself to start doing things, which I know is such a bleh answer. You probably wanted something more unheard of unique but really it is that simple now it takes time and you probably should just start with baby steps for me going to the gym used to give me anxiety right just going in the gym would give me so much anxiety that I, I couldn't do it nowadays I've progressed to the point where I film in the gym right so now filming in the gym is what gives me anxiety I have gotten pretty much to a point where I think I could go into a gym and work out and be chilling why because I've experienced worse anxiety with filming myself in the gym because filming myself in the gym has now made just being there seem easy you know what I mean like if I can do that that's just nothing which is kind of where the baby steps will lead you so for me I would never leave my house so I kind of started just forcing myself to go to the grocery store and not even for like a long time I would just force myself to go in and get one thing I could still instacart the rest of my stuff or whatever but I would make myself just go get one thing if that's even too much so we start by just like getting in your car or obviously like everyone's fears can be different your fear might not be public but that's what I did for me and it is uncomfortable but you don't grow when you're comfortable you grow when you're uncomfortable and putting yourself in uncomfortable situations I guess I just didn't realize how far I had come until I've been I guess really trying for at least like two years ever since I moved away from home for the first time that was like my big leap of like okay I have to do this like I either gonna do it or I'm gonna stay here in Wisconsin and be the same person forever or I'm going to leave and figure it the fuck out on my own and become the person that I know I'm meant to be which sounds so cliche and cheesy but I don't know any other way to do it because that's just how I've done it it's kind of like exposure therapy I'm a big fan of exposure therapy but I have noticed when I go too far with it I'll have a moment where I'm like yes I can do this and I'll put myself in a position to be in public or be around lots of people or to be doing something I've had to learn how to notice cues from my body because I get really overstimulated really fast if I push myself too far too fast I kind of just lose it I spiral I become so anxious which causes me to be I don't want to say the word mean but just like easily like angry by things I shouldn't be angry about and so I've learned to just not push myself too far and I'm getting better at recognizing when I have pushed myself too far and I'm like okay am I acting like this because someone did something to me or am I acting like this because I'm overstimulated I went a little too far you know I girl bossed a little bit too close to the Sun and I'm fucked I need to get myself out of there and get myself back to a position where I feel safe and comfortable and then I can regroup. For me, it was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the gym, but I only have to get on the treadmill for 10 minutes, okay? And then the next time I go, I'm gonna go for 15. And then the next time I go, I'm gonna pick up a weight in the corner, or I'm just gonna go explore the gym, just get a little feel around, and so on and so forth until you're just comfortable. And it no longer is something that is giving you anxiety because it's normal, it's familiar, and you feel like you belong, because you do belong. It doesn't have to be the gym, it can be literally anywhere. The earth is our big old rock ours to explore it is no more mine than it is yours i hope that that phrase means like we're equals so yeah i don't know 
what, what was the question? Stick to the baby steps. It'll benefit you in the long run. Right now I'm doing it with growing my team. I'm not comfortable with that. I get nervous filming around people. I don't want to disappoint people. So for me, I've kind of held off from that, but I know that if I want to continue to go forward, I need to hire some more people, have some more people on my team that have my back. Or like, I've been getting a lot of opportunities, whether it be to like host an event, which I might have to do soon, and that scares me. That would definitely be out of my comfort zone, but my instinct is to say no, just because I feel like I'm not good enough and I don't deserve it, but why? Why do I feel that way? Is it actually true or is that just my brain telling me things? It's my brain telling me things. I'm a bad bitch. I can do it, I deserve to be there. So saying yes to those things, like the Barbie premiere, I would've been way too scared to go to that before. But I went and I had fun and I met two of the sweetest girls, Georgia and Lily, and we filmed videos with them and we just had the time of our lives. I would've been too scared to do that two years ago. Even if I went, I wouldn't have talked to a single soul and I talked to so many people while I was there. It might've been after a cocktail or two, okay? But I did it and it was fun. <laughs> said how do you get your lashes to be so long well, right now I was crying so they probably look a little crazy I have good lashes I think I was just born with them I don't have the best lashes but I have learned that my lashes curl upwards which I guess some people's don't and so I'm grateful that mine do I do use the babe lash eyelash serum but I feel like a big part of it is just genetics I wish I had a cooler answer for you oh well someone said please tell me you're gonna keep skating they are referring to the video I posted on Reels and TikTok of me rollerblading. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. I wanted to find a new fun way of cardio and when I went to the Barbie content shoot, they gave us the rollerblades that Margot wears in the movie. I've had them for like a month or so now and I hadn't used them. And I'm like, I am wasting such a good pair of shoes. I'm gonna go rollerblading. And so I tried it. I was scared because I've tried ice skating and I hate ice skating. I love ice skating, but I hate it. It's love-hate relationship because it hurts my ankles. It, it's just so painful that I can't enjoy it, but I want nothing more than to be a professional figure skater. My toxic trait is every time the Olympics comes around, summer or winter, I get such bad FOMO about being a diver, a gymnast, and an ice skater that I think I am one and I could be one. I'm like, eh. It can't be that hard, you know? I could do that. Or I'd be better than that if my mom wouldn't have pulled me out of gymnastics when I was two. Like, I was on the course to be the best in the world. Please picture me in a leotard. My mom did us all a favor. Why did I get on that? I don't know, but the skating, I tried it. Rollerblading did not hurt like ice skating does. It felt great. Well, not great, because I was literally gasping for air, dying. I actually have to sit down. I might throw up. But as long as I stayed on like a smooth surface, there are some cobblestone streets in St. Pete that were impossible to rollerblade on. I don't know what I was thinking, but the regular sidewalks, it's actually lots of fun, and I'm going to continue to do it and hopefully work up my endurance to make it more than two feet without keeling over. But I'm definitely going to keep skating. There's actually a lot of questions about the Barbie premiere. I'm definitely gonna make a story tour about it for you guys because I feel like you wanna hear about it, so I'm going to. Someone said, are y'all getting married and do you see yourself having kids in the future? I would love to get married and I would love a child. I used to think that I wanted four. I don't know how I would do that. I want at most two, unless I have like triplets or something and then it was just meant to be. I just don't know how I'm gonna deal with that. I'm too short for triplets. Like where would they go? But I would love a baby. Not right now. I wouldn't know what to do with a baby right now. I have my dog and my cat, so that's like plenty of children for me moment but I would love to get married and I would love two kids I see myself starting to have kids maybe when I'm like 29 30 I don't know I don't want to think about it Ooh, okay I like this this is very niche but do you ever need a seatbelt extender so anxious about it I used to be so anxious about this that I would push off trips and like not travel anywhere but I'm a size 22 or 20 it just depends I would say like a year or two ago I did need a seatbelt extender but only on certain planes because every plane is different like the size of the plane I know how you're feeling because I have felt this way nobody cares and if somebody cares that you need a fucking seatbelt extender who gives a fuck about them anyways I have such bad travel anxiety and the whole seat thing used to be a big part of it now I've been on so many planes that I can tell if there's a chance I might need one or not and if I'm ever questioning it like maybe I'm a little bit more bloated that day or I know it's a smaller plane I just ask for it as I get on those flight attendants 
don't care. I've never had someone care. The only bad flight experience I've had being plus size is on Southwest. I told you guys this whole story, so I'm not gonna go into it. I think I told it in my Taylor Swift vlog of me going to the opening days, where on Southwest, if you're plus size, you can buy two seats, and then when you check in, they'll refund you one of those seats. That way you have two seats if you're gonna possibly be like in somebody else's seat, which I think is a great thing because it makes sense. The person who would have to sit next to me with my thigh all up in their business would be pissed about that because they paid for their seat too. Like they deserve a full seat. I can see why they wouldn't want to, but I also can see why it's not beneficial to just be mean to the person. A lot of plus size people will buy two seats on the plane. So it's nice of Southwest to refund that so you don't have to pay for two seats if that makes sense. But I did it once. It was me, Annika, and we had the middle seat open because it was a long flight and I wanted to be comfortable. We checked in, they refunded the ticket and they gave us this little ticket to like sit on the seat. The woman in the middle seat behind us, she didn't, it really pissed her off. She could not understand. She was like, why do you have that? Like someone sitting there? I don't know if she was just pissed that she ended up in the middle seat or what, but essentially she ended up just being like, is it for special accommodations? I'm like, okay, bitch, mind your damn business, but I have social anxiety. So I'm over here like, <laughs> yeah. As Annika's like fighting for me over there. So there's just a lot because of that and because of all you guys a lot of times with my job I'm like flying for like an event or something. They'll fly you out in the least Prissy bitch way possible will ask for a first class seat because they're bigger They're wider and I'm not gonna be in someone's spot and a lot of times for me to have to buy two coach seats It's the price of one first class ticket. That's how I justify me buying the first class ticket Otherwise, I just try to drive places, but who wants to fucking do that moral of the story is nobody cares for you to see belt extender if you need to see Seats, fly Southwest because they'll refund one of them and then I'll fight any bitches that try and give you a hard time about it. That's it. How are ADHD meds going? I love my ADHD meds. I take Vyvanse. I am on 40 milligrams I think right now. I know some people I think that takes 70. 40 is going better than 30 went but I definitely think like 50 would be great but I could be wrong. These are just the discussions I have with my psychiatrist. Literally if you look back the moment I started ADHD meds, the moment I started Vyvanse back in January, I believe, is the second that my career started to flourish because I had motivation and energy. I had the ability to focus on something and to complete my tasks and I just wanted to do something. There are some days I won't take it if I just like forget or by the time I remember, it's like 2 p.m. and it's, it's slow release so I would literally be up until four in the morning. I just noticed those days, I'm so scatterbrained. I get paralyzed by my to-do lists and like super overwhelmed that I will just sit not do anything. I binge way more. Overall, Vyvanse has just had such a positive experience in my life. It's even helped my anxiety because I'm able to focus when I'm doing something and I'm not sitting there thinking about a million ways that my life could end or anything that could possibly happen. So for me, it's been super positive. I know other people have different opinions on meds and ADHD and just ADHD in general, but I will say, literally look at what has happened in my career in the past six months versus the past three years all because I've been able to get shit done and have motivation and be excited and feel good. And the only thing I changed was a little bit of pill. I'm not saying you need to be medicated, but I tried for years and this is the first thing that has actually worked and changed my life. I'm able to sit here and say I needed a little bit of help and I don't think that's anything to be ashamed about. I could talk to you guys forever, but I feel like you're probably over it. So I can do another one and answer the rest of these questions if you guys really want me to. Or if you guys have any other questions, you can leave them in the comments. But thank you if you sat and listened to this the entire time. It means a lot that you guys chose to spend this time with me. I honestly was just like sobbing before this. And I feel better now. The magic of talking to your friends. I don't even remember what I was crying about. I want to let you know that I love you and even though I might not be on YouTube every single day Please know that I'm doing my best to get all of my ducks in a row so I can be here for you as much as I possibly can as one human being But I am very active on TikTok and Instagram if you guys want to follow me on those for the days that I'm not here I promise I'm gonna really try to not go as long without you. Okay, I'm really gonna try cuz I love you I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys really soon. Bye-bye